Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today is Monday, which means it's time for an episode of Loadout, the series where you guys, the viewers, get to pick a gun and customization for me to use. The way you do this is you leave a comment down below, and I will pick one of the top-rated comments for the next episode. Now, that first little clip there was me using the Sega 12K with Buckshot to unlock everything I needed for today's Loadout. And today's top comment comes from Why Are You Thinking the You're Doing It Wrong Loadout? Sega 12K, Frag Rounds, Any Optic, Grip of your choice, I recommend angled, laser or light of your choice. So I decided to go with the angled grip on here as recommended. Using the frag rounds, honestly, I can't remember the last time I was using frag rounds in Battlefield 4. I think most people just kind of write them off as useless, but in the spirit of loadout, here I am trying my hardest to make these things work. And this loadout certainly is bringing back some nostalgia slash dread from the Battlefield 3 Usos frag rounds. There was a point in Battlefield 3 where the Usos with frag rounds was just such a disgustingly good weapon. Uh, it could really destroy everybody in Operation Metro, and I had a few videos using the USAS 12 with frag rounds and the infrared night vision scope when it was pretty much overpowered and could spot anybody out on Metro and it just made it so easy. Uh, that was certainly a broken state of Battlefield 3 so if you remember it fondly then good for you. This is probably as close as you're going to get to it in Battlefield 4 but it just isn't quite what it used to be. Now of course finding the USAS 12 in one of the maps in Battlefield 4 is certainly closer to the Battlefield 3 variation but but uh, you can't always guarantee that you're gonna get that weapon. Splash damage certainly is the name of the game with frag rounds. Certainly direct shots are gonna do good damage as well, but if you can't get a direct shot, then bouncing the round off of any surface near your opponent is gonna do the trick. Now, if you hit somebody directly with a frag round, you should be doing both direct damage and splash damage at the same time. And that damage varies not only on your distance, but whether or not you're using it with a semi-auto shotgun or a pump action shotgun. Pump action frag rounds do considerably more damage. They do 37.5 to 10, depending on what range you hit them from. And if you're using a semi-auto shotgun like we are right now, you're gonna be doing 20 to five damage again, depending on the distance. Of course, you have that extra added damage of 25 uh, potential splash damage that drop off is about to 2.5 meters. So you wanna make sure that you get that splash as close to your opponent as possible to get that maximum 25 damage. And as you can see from this range kill here, I'm using it essentially as a very weak grenade launcher. The drop off on these shells is absolutely insane. The bullet velocity is crazy slow of 150 meters per second. So you really do have to aim above your opponent at distance. Distance. It's also being affected pretty much by double gravity as the bullet drop is 15 meters per second squared, which is much higher than it should be. So again, that's just going to affect your bullet arc much more. And looking at the left side of the Simpthic stats here, you'll notice that we have a 200 round per minute rate of fire, which isn't the fastest available. But if you were curious, the actual Usos 12 that you can pick up in the game has a 300 round per minute rate of fire. So obviously the Usos 12 that you can pick up really is the ultimate frag round shotgun. But even then, I would not consider it to be necessarily overpowered. Frag rounds are difficult to use because they move so slowly getting direct shots especially on a moving target is very difficult to do and if you're relying purely on splash damage to take somebody out it's going to take four shots to kill them. So unfortunately your damage per second is painfully low. One of the best things about the frag rounds though to try and throw off your opponent is the fact that when they're going off near your opponent their screen is just all over the place. It's shaking, they're getting suppressed, it's going to be very hard for them to be accurate and return accurate fire on you. You can see there how effective splash damage can be, especially when somebody's just right around the corner. You can literally damage somebody who does not have line of sight on you. Now the Saiga, as you can tell from the reload animation, is a magazine fed shotgun and it has a fairly fast reload time of 2.2 seconds with an eight round magazine and you can have nine if you top off in the chamber. And as you can see from my intro clip, this is a very good and effective shotgun when using buckshot or flechette rounds, when using it in an actual shotgun manner rather than using it with the frag rounds. Frag rounds on the other hand just puts you in a very weird situation. I don't know if it really matters what weapon you're using it with. Oftentimes if I find an Usos on the ground in one of the 
one of the maps, which is clearly the best frag round shotgun, I will just leave it there because it is a difficult weapon to use and it puts you in a weird situation. You'll see I'm aiming at somebody's feet right there because that is a viable tactic because it can be so hard to get direct body shots on them that just aiming at the feet and getting guaranteed splash damage is a safer route to go. For long range shots, you often don't have the luxury of choosing exactly if you wanna go for body damage or splash damage specifically. I just try and aim as close to the target as possible and hope for the best. Again, you may notice that it seems like a lot of my opponents are taking uh, a while to return fire on me. And again, a lot of that is just because of the chaos that the frag rounds create on the other end. If you've ever been on the receiving end of a LAV or something like that with explosive rounds just going off all around you, shaking your screen, creating chaos, that's kind of what it feels like to be on the end of a semi-auto shotgun running frag rounds. The only downside is that it just doesn't do very much damage. So if you can keep your wits about you and return fire in a semi-accurate nature, you can probably take Take down the guy shooting. Now as for using the angled foregrip on here, I chose it because it was recommended in the comments, but I think personally I would probably run with the ergo grip because that does improve your accuracy while moving around, and that really is a big part of trying to be effective with this weapon is staying on the move even while you shoot and maintaining your accuracy while you shoot. If you try using it without an ergo grip, you'll notice that your accuracy really does go uh, pretty much off center target when you're side strafing, and that's a really Really important part of just being good with shotguns in general so I would recommend ergo grip definitely instead of the angled foregrip. Angled foregrip can be nice for trying to reduce some of that initial recoil but ultimately it's not that bad so you're not getting that big of a benefit. Now because frag rounds are often at the end of the list of unlocks when you're trying to get them for any shotgun, you're gonna spend a lot of time with buckshot or flechette rounds or slug rounds before you unlock them and you're gonna get used to how good shotguns can be when using uh, decent ammo. You'll switch over to a frag round and your performance is gonna go down. Now my performance was really bad initially, I started to develop more tactics to try and be better with frag rounds. At the same time, uh, I just felt like there was a very limited skill cap with the where you can only do so well and beyond that once you go up against decent opponents they're just gonna take you down so it certainly is good for taking out noobs or people who aren't very fast on the uptake but once you start running into those pro players you are going to get destroyed as always guys thanks for watching don't forget to leave your comments down below letting me know what you would like to run for the next episode of loadout and I'll see you next time this is level cap signing off